Hi guys, um, my name is Crystal Clay. Um, I am the senior aquarist here at the Estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea. And today I'm going to be talking to you about some of the animals I take care of, like the lionfish and the scorpionfish today. So, the lionfish are known for their invasiveness. They're very invasive here in the Gulf of Mexico and along the Atlantic coast. And they're natively found around the Indo-Pacific, so Indonesia, Japan, Australia, that area of the world. So they're not meant to be here. What are some interesting things about the lionfish? Why are they considered invasive? So they're considered invasive because this is not their natural habitat, but also because they don't have any natural predators here, which makes a problem. Um, so on top of the lionfish, you can see these sharp ray of spines on top. See with these top things right here? Those are venomous dorsal spines. So in their natural environment, they have predators that can digest and break down that venom, but here they don't have any um, animals that can really do that. Also, it doesn't look like a fish that normally animals here would eat. This red and white coloration is a warning coloration that I'm dangerous, don't eat me. So things around here don't want to try it without knowing that they're going to survive. Thomas, who's in Nashville, he wants to know, what is the average life expectancy and toxicity of a lion? Toxicity is not enough to actually kill you. Um, it's rarely fatal, but it does does burn like your hands on fire, from what I've been told. Um, life expectancy is around 15 to 20 years, so they live quite a while. Leo wants to know, how did they get here? How did they get here? Um, well, a lot of it has to do with people having them in their home aquarium tanks. Um, they sell them in the pet trade to local people, to hobbyists to take care of. And when they get a little too big, because you see these guys get quite big, they would let them go in the ocean thinking they were doing the best thing for the fish, except they're not found here. How do they make their venom? Aubrey wants to know. It's a venom gland that they have right underneath all the spines. And where are they mostly found when we see them around here? When we see them around here, we find them a lot. They like to live around structure, so we see them a lot around the rig legs out there, so those oil and gas rigs we can see offshore. What do they eat? Tracy wants to know. Um, they're not very picky. Uh, they'll actually eat anything they can put in their mouth, so including other smaller um, venomous animals like their cousin the scorpion fish who's down there. So smaller ones of them they'll actually put in their mouth. Um, so that's what makes them kind of also a problem here is because they don't they don't have a, a particular one fish they go after. They, if they can fit it in their mouth, they're going to eat it. Davin wants to know, why are they called lionfish? And they get that name because it looks like they have a mane around them with how their fins spread out like this. It's kind of like how a lion's mane does with that big fluff around the head. And you were showing me something really cool. Um, you were talking about how they hunt together, but where you can spread your hands out yeah, so sometimes if you spread your hands out, they'll match up with you and they'll do the same thing with their fins. Lionfish have been known to practice what's called collaborative hunting, which is where they all together as a group will hunt. So they'll use those big fins of theirs to kind of herd their prey together into a group and then eat. Ellie wants to know, about how old are these fish that we have in here? These guys, we've had them for the last five, six years, so they can be, except for the one in the back, they're not really fully grown. So they can live for probably another 10 years easily. Um, let's see, let me go backwards. Teresa wants to know, can you eat them? You can eat them. Um, since they are venomous and not poisonous like the puffer fish, once you just remove the top dorsal spines, they're safe to eat. Judah wants to know what their main predators are. Now we know that you mentioned they don't have predators here, but in the areas where they do have predators, what are their predators? Their main predators where they're from are going to be things like moray eels, sharks, um, some bigger fish and either bigger versions of them, other species of lionfish that are bigger. Um, let's see. Sarah wants to know, how deadly is their venom? It can't kill you. It's rarely fatal, but it does hurt. What about for other animals, though? For other animals, um, typically it's not too fatal as long as they don't get stuck in the mouth. Um, so typically they eat them head first. Mary. Do we know, do we have a way we can tell boys and girls? There actually is a way, and it's really weird, is that the males have much of a more squarish head. So the biggest guy in here 
is also our boy, which is going to be the one in the very, very back right over here. He's our boy. He's got a much squarer head, and during mating season, his stripes are much darker in color. And you had also, when we were talking about these guys last week, you told me there's one that's very interesting where he was able to grow back muscle and tissue. Yep, yeah, which is going to be our boy back there. He'll come there around. You can kind of see him right there. So you'll see in his stripe pattern that there's some stripes that don't quite match up. And because um, lionfish can naturally are known for being able to grow back their skin, but we have an eel in here who got a little too excited during feeding time, and because of eel's bad eyesight, accidentally grabbed the lionfish and took a little bit of muscle and skin out. Um, took about two weeks and the lionfish regrew the muscle and the skin. Uh, Hillary wants to know, how big are they when they are full grown? And you said the boy's probably the biggest? Yeah, he's, he's full grown size. So Hillary, this one that we're looking at right now, this is our big guy. He's going to hide again. Very cool. Um, somebody asked, and I missed the question, but how did we catch these guys? Very carefully, of course. Um, so these guys are different from a lot of other fish in that you can't catch them on hook and line. So we have divers who, when they're out there doing research or even just hunting for these guys, will go up and find them, and then you very carefully kind of guide them into a, a jar, because if you try to catch them in a net, their spines will get hooked up in the net, and then becomes a lot more dangerous. Let me see back here. Tracy, what marine animals are they harming by being in their environment and eating their food since they are invasive? They're harming our, um, they, since they can fit things in their mouth, they're pretty large size, they're harming our juvenile populations of fish, our baby fish. Um, so they're actually seeing some issues around the Bahamas and the Keys where they're eating a lot of smaller herbivorous fish, so your herbivores, your plant eaters, they eat the algae on the coral reefs to keep the reefs healthy. So they're actually causing problems with the coral reefs right now. Thomas, uh, he asked, during mating season, do they reproduce like regular fish and do the females stay protective of the eggs and lay them or do they go away? What's um, their... They are spawners, which means they just kind of drop the eggs somewhere and they don't have any protectiveness of them. Um, talk to Leah. How much do they eat each day? Actually, um, we feed them roughly four or five big, like one inch chunk pieces of fish a day, but they'll keep eating until pretty much forever. They don't get full really. So you could just keep putting food in there. Yeah, but eventually it becomes unhealthy for them because then they pick up too much weight. Uh, Ellie wants to know, how big are they when they are babies? So that, how big are they? So they're like little microscopic, so they, they grow like all other fish do. They're a little zooplankton, so they're not really visible by the naked eye. Okay. Um, do they bite? They don't have teeth, but they will. If I put my finger in there, they would definitely try to put it in their mouth. Um, Leo want, Liam wants to know, how long can their spines, fins grow? So with the male right there that's right in front, you can see it's about a couple inches long, and their fins get pretty far out there was about half their body length. Um, and let's go back. Hit, what are their predators again? You said eels and... Eels, sharks, um, groupers, and then when they're smaller, bigger lionfish. Okay. Um, how fast can they swim? They don't move very fast. As you see, they're not the fastest. They're more of what we call an ambush predator. So they tend to move very slowly and sneak up on their prey. And they're actually, I think uh, Crystal in the fisheries lab has said that they're actually kind of lazy, aren't they? They are. I mean, they're used to the food coming to them. They don't really go to the food. <laughs> um, Allie wants to know, what part of the world do they live in? So what's their natural habitat? Their natural habitat is the in, what's called the Indo-Pacific. So that's the region around Japan, Indonesia, Australia, that part of the ocean. Grayson wanted to know how big they get. I'm gonna go back over this way and find our boy again. Right here. Right it's here. about. Yeah, Grayson, that's about how big they get. It's about 16, 17 inches long. 16, 17 inches. Leah wants to know, are they venomous when they are babies? And do other fish eat them when they are babies? They are venomous for their entire lifespan. So as soon as they're born, they're venomous. Um, and other ones do. Um, it's much easier to break down a lot less toxin than it is to break down a bigger one, but they do eat them. 
Um, Mary asked, what temperature water do they like? They like warmer water, which is why they're a problem here. They like around 70, 80 degree water, which is why they become a problem here because it's so warm in the Gulf. Um, and let's go back to that one again. We've had it a couple of times. How deadly is their sting? It won't kill you. It's rarely fatal. It just will burn. Ellie wants to know, are they nocturnal? They are not. They are uh, what we call diurnal, a daytime species. So that's why they're all cruising around right now looking for food. Very cool. Joey wants to know, we've talked about length, but Joey wants to know, how much do they weigh? Well, about a pound or two. They're not a very heavy species. Alice wants to know, how long is their lifespan? Around 15 to 20 years. And Hayden asks, can people eat lionfish? Which we kind of chatted about, but have you ever had lionfish? I have not. Um, I actually don't eat fish. But uh, from what I've heard, it tastes like mahi-mahi, the dolphin fish, so it's actually quite good. Um, but they are edible. All you have to do is just take off the top venomous dorsal spines and they are safe to prepare. So they're not, but they're not as, as dangerous to eat as, what is it, the puffer fish that yeah. you have to be very careful with? Yeah, so the difference is with the puffer fish is they're poisonous, so they have a poison gland inside that you have to worry about. With them, it's just the venomous spine, so it's much easier to prepare and not have to worry about. Um, Aubrey asks, if they like warm water, how far, far north do they live? So how far up the coast can we find them? Um, typically, we find them all the way up to around North Carolina. Um, because of that Gulf Stream, it keeps that water nice and warm up there. But they have had instances um, during occasional warm spells in New York actually seeing them there. Okay. And Tracy asks, since, the warmer, since they like warmer water, what do they do in the winter here when the water is cooler? Uh, move further offshore and move into deeper waters. So while it might seem colder on the coast to us, once you move further offshore where there's much more water and much deeper, it tends to hold temperature a lot better. Um, Isaac asks, what, why are they not nocturnal? Most fish species are daytime species. They hunt during the day. Um, most of these guys prey are awake during the day and since they're waiting for their prey to come to them, it's easier to hunt during the day. Um, Terry asks, how were they introduced to this area as an invasive species? And we don't really know the answer to that, do we? No, it's largely believed to be people who had them in their home tanks letting, letting them go into the Gulf. Um, they also blame Hurricane Andrew, which came around in 92, um, which happened to wipe out a couple of exotic pet stores in lower Florida, which they think also might have caused some of the increase. Uh -huh. Uh, Tanisha, thank you guys. This is so fun. Thank you for watching, Tanisha. Um, Bev wants to know, how many spines do they have? So how many are up here at the top, typically? Uh, 10 to 11 for this species. And you said for this species, how many lionfish species are there? That gets a little tricky with the naming, but for their family, which is called scor Scorpinidae, which is uh, for lionfish and the scorpionfish, uh, there are over 350 different species. Rihanna wants to know why they sting and can they do that all the time? So are they always able to sting you? They're always able to sting you. It's not like a bumblebee where it's a one, one sting and they're done. Um, but typically they're not going to come up to you and sting you accidentally. Because of how those spines are, you have to accidentally touch them or grab them. And are they vicious? April wants to know. No, you see them. They're quite friendly. They just kind of cruise around. They're known for being a very, not the brightest fish. They just try to put things in their mouth that they think it looks like food. And when we talk about their mouth, you have a preserved one right here. Yeah. And if you hold it up, they actually have a really huge mouth, don't yeah. they? Yeah, that's why they can eat a lot of things. It's because they have such a wide mouth. They can open a lot, a lot bigger than we think they can. Um, Hannah wants to know, why do they have giant spikes? Just mostly to protect them. I mean, if you don't want to get eaten, you got to find a way to keep things from eating you. That's do a good way colors change from birth to adulthood? No, they keep these stripes. Um, the only change they do is during mating time, the males will get stripes, will get much darker, almost a black color in this species. And Jackson asks, what should I do if I get stung by a jump lionfish? If you do get stung, if there is a spine in you, leave the spine in there. Just go run under really hot water, as hot as you can stand until the burning stops, and then get a medical professional to take the spine out of you. So you do have to go somewhere medically to get it taken care of. 
if the spine is still in you. If the spine is not, they usually don't leave a big wound. Um, then you can just rinse with hot water. And as long as you don't experience any external side effects from that fever or anything else like that, you're good to go. So Thomas is asking, what are the fleshy tentacles? Let me walk back around here. What are the fleshy tentacles above the eyes and below the mouths on young lionfish? And what happens as they grow? So those fleshy things you're talking about are actually not really seen on the species we have here. You see them a lot on um, a different species of lionfish. There's one called a fuzzy dwarf lionfish that gets roughly about five, six inches long and has a lot of these frills on the face. And that's just for camouflage. Helps them blend into their decor a bit better. Rowan asks, how do they feel? So if you were to, if you were to feel one, what do they feel like? They're very smooth. They have very small scales, so they're just a very smooth fish. Isabel wants to know if they can camouflage themselves. They can. Um, they'll hide in, in rock work and holes and caves like that out in their natural environment and kind of wait for predators there. So they can kind of sit like you see this guy doing, so they don't have to keep swimming as much. They kind of just take naps. <laughs> Blair and Baker want to know, what time of year do you catch them? Um, most times you can find me around, but typically a lot during the summer is your best chance of finding them. Joanna, thank you. She says her whole homeschool clubhouse is watching, so we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Ricky wants to know, are they better grilled or fried? Last time I went to the Texas Flower Gardens, I saw more of them. I'm not sure on that, but I know there's plenty of recipes out there for how to cook lionfish, but I'm assuming if it's anything like cooking mahi-mahi. If you follow those kind of instructions, you can find a good recipe. Uh, Dakota wants to know, why do they have stripes? Helps with cross camouflage. If there's a whole bunch of them with stripes, kind of like how zebras do, it helps with predators. So they tend to hang out in fairly large groups sometimes, so it makes it much harder for a fish to pick off one of them. And it's probably, they like structure, so they can probably blend into the structure pretty well. It does help with that as well. Grayson asks, what do their eggs look like? It'd be a little small, like essentially a ball of just small little dots. Not we'll, really. We'll find a picture and share it. How about that? Yeah. Okay. We haven't had any of them in here reproduce, so I've. Um, Judah wants to know if they die after they use their venom. They do not. They're not like a bumblebee, so they do get a sting multiple times and keep living. And Liam asks, do they swim in the open or do they hide? They can swim in the open. Um, typically, they're not one of them swimming open in the open. They'll have multiples with them. They'll kind of travel as a group. Um, but they will hide around structure, too, just for finding food. Erin, um, you're more than welcome. We happy to, we're happy to answer your questions. Uh, Latrice, thank you for loving us. Brett wants to know, how long can they live? About 15 to 20 years. And Aubrey, going back to the eggs, when is mating season? Do they have a particular time? Typically around spring and summer when the water's warmer and the conditions are just right. Um, Barrett wants to know how much they weigh. About a pound or two. They're not a very, very heavy fish. Um, let's see. Let's start wrapping up. Last couple of questions. Um, do you know how many babies they normally have at one time? S Sophie, age nine, wants to know. Couple hundred couple hundred. How, do you know how many of them live out of those couple hundred? Since they don't have any predators here that eat the babies as frequently, more of them have a chance to survive, but naturally in their natural environment it'd be two or three. Wonderful. All right, one more question, guys. Ezra wants to know, how do they grow that skin and everything because they don't have gills? Or because don't they have gills? They do have gills. Um, but do you know how we kind of shed our hair in a way? They kind of do that with their skin, so they'll shed that outer skin layer roughly once every couple weeks, um, kind of like we do to kind of keep clean and stay healthy. Wonderful. Um, all right, final question because I thought it was a good one. Do they get scared? From us, not really. They're, they're as I said, they're not the brightest, so they don't tend to get afraid of a lot of things, which is what makes them very easy is because you can just swim up right on these guys out in the rigs and have no problems. <laughs> um, man, Carissa, we have so many questions here. Um, can you take a couple more? Yeah. Okay. Andrew wants to know, why are they so calm? 
because they don't really have anything to fear. I mean, not a lot of things out there eat them. And they're usually the top predator on a lot of their food chains. Um, Ellie wants to know, do lionfish sting each other? They do not. They're actually immune to their own venom, which is a good plus for them. <laughs> um, how Gil, who's five years old in Los Angeles, he asks, do these fish come near the beach? Um, we don't typically find them near the beach. They don't like the shallows. They like structure. So closest I've heard of them being is the rigs, which are about a mile offshore here. Um, Trey wanted to know, when you say deep part and the structure, about how deep do you think? They typically hang out about 15 feet deep. So that's why they're a little difficult for us to catch because you got to go down there and get them. Um, Stella, age eight, wants to know if they would make good pets. They do, but as I said, they get big and they're a little dangerous to handle. Um, Jen asked, do lionfish try to eat turtles? They don't really ever come across any turtles except for sea turtles in their environment, so sea turtles are much bigger than them. And then, Allie, you're going to be our last question for this segment. Um, where are... Where do we get our lionfish from? So where do these guys come from? These are from the wild. They found these off the rigs around here. So that shows you how prominent they are around here. We, we find them almost every time we go out there to the rigs. Wonderful. Well, Carissa, thank you so much. Rihanna, who is six years old, wants to thank you and says this was so much fun. Okay. Um, and tomorrow we're chatting on remember we'll have to check the schedule um, I think we're chatting with one of our university program students about um, red drum diet so we're gonna look at fish stomachs pretty cool all right That's well guys fun. everybody thank you so much Krissa let's tell everybody bye bye thank you guys <laughs>